<laughs> shall, shall, is, is it worth trying the last three in a bracket as well? Yeah, that's a good is idea. It, they yeah, they, they, there are all sorts of things we can say about them. Yeah, yep. great. Yep. So you guys would have seen Perusi come up before. Masolino office. So you, you've seen Perusi before. Many of you have bought Perusi from us and, uh, and and consumed it. Sorry, mate. No, that's right. Yeah, now we both look like we've hurt ourselves. Um, Customers so, will believe what I do for a living anyway. Yeah, exactly. I've been busted on that one a few times, uh, bringing booze back. Um, and so we've got two other crews that I'm not super familiar with, but we're fortunate enough. Uh, actually, so I have actually tried some Sordo wines before today. I tried the Reservas um, at uh, the Festa del Barolo uh -huh, uh, yes. finale, the yep. lunch. So they, they were on there. I can't remember who put them on. And, and it really got me to Cameron. get in. Yes, it was, to get in touch with you. Yep. Because I thought, geez, if that's what's going on there, I need to see the rest. So So there was, his favourite was Gabuti, yeah. yeah. Yeah, solid wine. Yeah. And, yeah, and 10. I think it was. It was, it was yeah. 10. Or, or eight. Might have been. One or the other. It was one of 50. I've got a picture of it somewhere. <laughs> but either way, we've got three Barolos here. Tell us about the communes. And yeah. Tell us about where we're going with these. In the Castiglione Folletto bracket, um, uh, Parusi I normally have at the beginning of that bracket. Yep. Um, yeah. Only because I'm always thinking about the three wines to come, you know, the, 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 the big trio of, of, Rocca, yep. of, of Valero, Rocca di Castiglione and, yep. and uh, Monbrivato. But Parusi, you're right, you pointed out before you even tried it, it by its nature, it's plumper. It's a yep. big plumper wine. You'll see red, red plums market a quite a different wine to yep. the others. It's, it's, um, it's got more, uh, more character of, of looking over on this side. It's actually a more tannic, uh, overtly tannic wine even yep. than, than um, uh, the three wines preceding it. So you're beginning to actually look at number one in these three, um, a more serious tannin profile, a more challenging tannin profile. Mm -hmm. So s a slightly dusty, uh, almost Montfort tannins in the Perusi. Mm -hmm. uh, Montfort, Montfort, Perno is the heartland. This is ch this is to Ceretta portion. Um, mm -hmm. The characteristics of it are, um, I suppose, cherry liqueur is an absolute characteristic of of Montfort. Um, uh, uh, cedar, sandalwood. Now, pe some people. This is the other wine that some people have thought. Is there some wood going? On? No, no, no. That's a that's a characteristic you see in Perno. Sometimes Genestra, Busia, for example. You know the three big yeah, names of yeah, sure. of Montfort. Yeah, sandalwood do. is a. So is so, Aldo yeah. Contorno's wines. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, he's backed off on, on oak in a, you know, progressively, and it's gone up and down a little bit, um, but there's always that, that kind of character. That's, in a, that's an area characteristic. Sandalwood, yep. um, it has Montfort, again, to, you know, to that, uh, as, as sort of identifiers in mass tastings. When all else has failed, Montfort, you go, have a look at the tannins, and they're like a chalkboard. Mm. Uh, Hugh and Hook describes them as brick dust. Mm -hmm. Hewan's got a, a really great uh, turn of phrase with Barolo. He really, he really has um, uh, distilled it, if you like, down to a, 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 a few good descriptors. And brick dust, chalk, chalk dust to me. But also yep. green twiggy tannins is, is Montfort. And Do you know what? It's funny because that sounds, all sounds horrible. It sounds disgusting. <laughs> really? Uh, quite so. It, but... It works. What? It, what? Look, they are. It, it, when I go and do, um, I used to do Nebbiolo Prima. You know, the week long yep. Nebbiolo things where the producers gradually unfold their their wines and they have specialist sessions and all sorts of things. Yep. Um, you'd start, you know, with with um, Roero, then Novello Verduno, uh, then Barolo, yep. uh, uh, La Mora Barolo, Castiglione Filetto, and then you get to Thursday. Ah, yep. uh, today's Montfort Day. Oh, oh shit! shit. <laughs> Getting to practice in the, after so many of those, you know, that's really hard. It's like doing the sparklings at the Adelaide Wine Show. You know, yep. bits of your mouth are starting to fall off yep. by yep. the by yep. the end of the day. It's yep. it's hard yakka. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. but what it gives you in return is the most complex wine. Montfort is is unquestionably the one like Chateau Neuf de Pape mm. mm. that will give you thirteen aromas. Mm. Yeah, hey. Uh, it's somewhere between 10 and 22, you know, this is no exact science, but it'll give you a lot of mm. ar aromatics and they just keep coming and they keep coming, but in mm. a fairly overt, but quite beautiful way. Mm. 
not in the finesse of these, but in a more powerful and radiant sort of way, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, a perfumier would probably put it in better terms. You know, there's, yep. there's, there's classes of perfume that you, that you enjoy for its it, persistence and sheer delicacy. Others yep. that you, you enjoy for their sheer power and persistence, and that's Montfort. Um, there's a little, there's a little uh, These things smell. Have been the most brooding as well at the moment. They are, they are, and it does. A, there's a couple of other things it does. It's got a particular smell in there. Uh, it's the one where you'll smell eucalyptus or menthol yep. or or yep. what the Italians call balsamic. It's a, not balsamic as in you know um, uh, VA. It's 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 what they they call a little herb that's a little bit like sage, a yep. little bit like catmint. Yep. So yep. a slightly minty sage. Yep. That that's a dead giveaway for these. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. But that's uh, and it just keeps doing that. The the other thing that it does is is if for example I've I've uh, I've been tasting these these samples and they're almost they're almost done. Uh, you know the last the last dregs of them probably I wouldn't take home on the plane to Adelaide, yep. but Montfort I always will. Montfort yep. will still be going in a week's time. That tannin yep. Yep. is its preservative, and yep. so many times for this guy and, and uh, the Barale Barolo Bussier, for example, uh, yep. which is a wine you know I could I could wander it around the world, and that tannin will look after it, you know, and, and it will be infinitely aromatic. Yep. So that's that's what it gives you in return for putting up with a bit more tannin. Wow, I'm I'm actually this is the this is the bracket that I'm at the moment most struggling with just from the fact that they're, 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 they're perhaps the most closed and brooding uh, they I'm, are, I'm waiting they? for them yeah. to pop a bit I can see components in there that when it comes together I think I'm, I'm really going to enjoy but right now I'm, I'm just saying hang on what's Perno's going on? Quite, quite closed up tight Perno's isn't it I can smell close. I can actually smell chalk dust or, yeah. or Hewan's brick dust yeah yeah and then, but the, the Prusies Prusies are probably the for me at the moment the most giving um, yeah, it's got a bit of red plummy flesh yeah um, it's very different to Massolino's uh, Perusi uh, but um, there's traits across the two uh, that, that you know that you can see it's probably in fact the tannins now that you say that the tannins you could if they're not the if they're not the green twiggy chalky tannins they they are the black tea tannins of Seralunga. Mm. Which probably brings us to the last wine. Mm -hmm. Gabuti, you don't see any other Gabuti that I can think of in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, there's not that, there's, there's only four or five people have a piece of it, so there's only two or three producers of it. Gab it Gabuti it, Boasso, for example. It's the first, first one I've seen. Right. First one I've seen. Well, yeah. it's, got, it's got all the hallmarks of, um, of Seralunga, you know, it's got meat stock. Yeah. Uh, or porcini stock, whatever you, whatever you like mm. to call that. Smoke, graphite, those sorts of things. Mm. But they have a beautiful radiant skin. Uh, again, more of that flesh, that um, sappiness that mm. uh, makes a great wine. This is to a lot of the trade, the really, really, really experienced palates, you know, or the, or the critical palates that have seen so much stuff, they need something to... This is, for many of the trade, the, the number one wine. Yeah, wow. And in fact, of my stock, I've been, there's a couple of them constantly digging into the older versions of Gabutis because this black tea <laughs> tannin that they have keeps them in very good condition so that the, the oh, I've, got, oh, I've got 10, 08, 6, 5. Yeah, great. Um, you know, and they really yeah. keep very well. This, this, they're, they're starting to come together now. It's starting to come together. That, that little bit of swirling we've done to aerate them is, is bringing them together. We're seeing more expression. The Pernos popping up, the Gabuti starting to pop up. Certainly, certainly down the savoury lines. Um, certainly, um, structurally, more tannin there. The thing about those tannins, though, is I, I think they're, they're beautiful tannins. They're beautiful tannins. They're very different to the, the tannins that we've seen in what we've ended up doing in splitting into three brackets. Um, if I was you guys, if you get a set of these, I would split them into these. It's it's too much for most people. We're experienced. Lot, we're, yeah. we, we've been drinking these since we're little, <laughs> ish. <laughs> so it's, it's it's not too bad. But younger and sillier. Yeah, do at least two at the same time because it gives you the easy ability to compare and contrast. If you can, please do. 
the the Valero, Cassioni and Monprovato together. Please do the Perusi, Perno and Gabuti together because you will get so much out of it. It, it is a good self education, isn't it, to see the the, the, yeah. the groupings of, of the way Barolo unfolds. A lot of people yeah. tell me they they love it and dig to it, but they just can't make their way through. So what yeah. you what you're saying is this this bracketing is a good education on the oh it's not only that but it's fun I mean, because you can fun. because you can have a you can have a taste yeah. after you've opened them and then just let them sit um have another little bit with a with a feed um make sure there's enough left over to have a little bit at the end of the night even the next day leave a little drag in the bottle to have it have the next day and i think you'll get a lot out of trying these all together now I'm going to have another quick little focus and taste because these are starting to open up again. They are, yeah. And then, and then, and then we'll, we'll, we'll try and wrap up what's, what's happened today, which is bloody hard to do um, because it's a pretty special experience. They're just starting to open up. The Prussi, the Prussi's got that juicy plum thing going. Um, mm. Perno's starting to show its cherry liqueur. The, the very... Kirsch... Uh, pa uh, Parker used the term um, Kirsch. Yeah. He he I think he was the first person to, to coin it. And um that's that's certainly starting to show that. And the gabuti is starting to show its sort of it's it's definitely smoky meaty things. If 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 when you're doing tastings, probably the the one wine you should never miss uh, mass tastings if you want points, uh Seralunga you should never miss. And the yeah. only wine that Seralunga will look like is Funnily enough, Brunello di Montalcino. Yeah. Because <laughs> of that meat stock Vegemite thing. Yeah. Black, you know, yeah. black cherry yeah. thing. But they have a cola element to them as well. You know, black cola. They do. Thing. They do. It's... And the tannin's quite, if you could paint it or draw it, it's, it's little it's black tea leaves. As distinct certainly, from chalkiness. Certainly, the tea across this range of three, actually, and then and then when you when you, you there's, gen, there's more generosity of fruit in the Prusi, Perno a little bit more closed, um, Gabuti is starting to pop open a bit more, uh, but definitely down the down that savoury line, some 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 almost mineral acid in the Gabuti, um, yes, and and definitely the the lift and the pickup in structural component and the structural elements of this wine is. Is clear uh, of, of all three wines. Another cracking set, a set to perhaps um, wait a couple of extra years for. Uh, there's there's more immediate appeal yeah, in here. The, the tannins in, across that, here. Yeah. These are demanding bottle time. You'll get particularly with the Rocky de Castiglione um, needs for me uh, needs a bit more t a bit more time to to just settle down. Yeah. But the Valero and the Monprovato are, are drinking beautifully at the moment. And both the Rivera and the Montvillero are drinking beautifully at the moment. So it's like... They're, they're ready, sort of. Sort of, yeah. Close to. Close to. So, yeah, drink Rivera, Montvillero as your first bracket. Catch up with your mates in another year and drink <laughs> um, Villero, Rocky di Castiglione and Montprovato. And then wait another year and have these guys. Better yet, a really good way to do it is actually get yourself three sets between your mates and do one whole set over yeah. three dinners early and then space them out after yeah. that. Uh, you, you do need to see these, you know, and they, and even this bracket of the of their three heavy, heavy wine uh, in reputation, they're not that expensive. So you can in, actually do that bracket yeah, yourself. And in, and in five years, um, yeah, and grab a Coravian to do it because they're, I mean, you're saying these have been holding up beautifully under Coravian as you've been showing them to people as well. So... That's another good tip to do it if you if you if you want to grab a Corbin and and I've I've actually been at a point now where with the right wines and I think these are the right kind of wines you, you can hold a wine under Corbin for six twelve months. Yeah, and, I, I'm and, now a convert. I must say I had to be you know in the sense of I know. Of Otherwise you're dropping a thousand bucks ago. <laughs> yeah, exa exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, listen, I don't know. How would you how would you wrap up? How would you sum up? Um, what we've what we've seen in this in this in this program. Yeah, right? yeah. I, well, I suppose it's a new name to people, and and I can well imagine people standing yeah, back from the for, table and long. saying, <laughs> "Yeah, look, 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 people people with a reputation like Paul that's seen so much wine and knows the difference between you know really complex wines and forced juice. You know the the, yeah. the, the blockbusters that are packing all this stuff in, but when they're when they're stripped bare." 
there's no length and no finish. Yeah. These yeah. are what people get excited about wine yeah. about. They're, they're, they're layered, they're real, you know, you can, if you've got the expertise, you can, you can sort of zero in exactly where they come from. And if you want to learn how to do that or that fascinates you, this is a this is a producer that can do that. Yeah. Yeah, and equally you can just have eight bloody good drinks, <laughs> and and we would take them to lunch without hesitation. Absolutely, and it's funny because look, I, I thought I'd called my find of the year earlier uh, in the year, and um, with Roberto's uh, Serralungas, and they are phenomenal wines, but I, I reckon these guys are. Just as a find, I can well imagine nobody's going to oh, argue about Marcelino's Vignerionda. As, no. as a truly electrifying wine, yeah. but these are just fascinating because they they they, they came out of nowhere. Nobody well, nobody knows about them. Well, what I'd say you do is, now. Uh, if I go through and I look at all of the things that I look at in terms of um, what makes a good wine, tick 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 tick, tick, tick all the way through, um, undoubtedly. And and the things that really stand out to me are, are the individuality of these wines, the purity of these wines. They are. They are all standalone, fascinating and enjoyable to drink. There are going to be sets that you're going to have to wait a little bit longer for, but they will they will come together. Yeah. There may be preferences you have, but to experience these will help you dial in to any preferences yeah. that you, you may or yeah. may not have. Or change them. Or change them. And I, I, th I think just a fascinating, yeah. fascinating set of wines, the harmony of the wines... The line and length of the wines as a whole, that purity, um, so much wonderful expression, yeah. and wines that say "drink me," they draw you into the glass. The worst sin of any wine is to be boring. Um, from the Nebbiolo all the way up. Yeah, cracking set of wines. Yeah, I would. I would say if you if you if you were in doubt, grab a Nebbiolo, a Barolo, and a Barbaresco. Just to get started. Just yeah. to get started and get your eye in and then um, and then see what you think yeah. after that. Yeah. Um, I have knocked back an incredible amount of Barolo and Barbaresco in tastings from 15, 16, 13 over the last 12, 18 months. It is just so wonderful to see 11 wines in a row that are bang on and nailing it. So... Yeah. You let me uh, before you before you let let me make a a, a plea to people. Yeah. More and more people listening to us are going over there. Yeah. Guys, please go here and have a look. The yeah. cellar door to see it to see their amazing cellar door operator uh, is a, almost overkill, but it's extremely architectural. Yeah. It's a bit like a clerical, but done yep. in timber. Yeah. So it's 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 modern there's stuff a, like that. There's a picture. There'll be a picture on the website. Have a look. It's. But they're f the most fabulous people. They actually yep. exist for hospitality. And yeah. what, what, what I'm getting at is that like more and more producers there these days uh, have to charge, you know, for, for tastings. If you make contact with me via Paul yep. and we'll organise a tasting for you, it probably you'll get the, you'll get the, uh, the treatment yeah. and, it won't, and it won't cost you anything or, or hey, very much. Thanks so much. Please go. Thanks so much for A, making that offer, and B, for bringing these wines along. Um, this has been a fantastic experience for me. I, I rarely get to the point of an, at the end of a, a, a Nebbiolo Barolo session where I'm, I'm pretty elated by every wine that I've had, but um, this has been one of those occasions. So, David, fantastic. thanks so much. I rather enjoyed it too, if you probably get it. Yeah, you. well, oh, thank you. I think we just need to find a plate of pasta somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Diddy. That's good, doesn't it? All right, Thanks, well, guys, um, you'll see an offer coming out. We're not just going to be offering these. There will be some reservers as well, and there will be some back vintages that you can have a look at, and, yes, uh, magnums. So take some time. Grab a couple of bottles or something just to get your eye in because you need to know about these guys for the future. They clearly have wisdom and the experience of, of time in the vineyard and in the winery uh, with, the, with the family on their side. So please uh, enjoy a bottle or two. Let me know and, and David know what you think. And uh, we look forward to catch up with you next time. Cheers, guys. Great, thanks.